Well, that was a great service. We've now covered everything that I had to talk about. Let's pray and go home. May the Lord bless you and keep you, and his face has already shined upon you, and I think we've got peace, so we're good to go. Okay, well. <laughs> Praise God. I want to begin with a few stories here, and not to give away the message, but God already did, so I can't really blame him. It's his deal anyway. So, my message today is talking about salty. How many here likes things that are salty? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I do like the pink Himalayan salt. I don't know if it's any better, but in my brain it makes me feel better, so I don't know. Uh, I like it a little better than that iodinized salt. I don't know. Don't, don't want any idols. <laughs> anyway. So anyway. <laughs> In 2 Kings uh, chapter 2, this has been a, a famous scripture for mine back even when I had the Green Bible. This was, you know, before 20. <laughs> but um, anyway, after the, the famous story that I always preached about when I was a teenager... I was reading the next story, and uh, a little bit of history of that, Elijah was taken up to heaven, and uh, the mantle was passed, and there was a whole bunch of people around thinking maybe God just put him in a cave or a ditch somewhere, and so they sent out a search party for three days, and they didn't find him. And then after that, Elisha told him, yeah, I told you not to go do that, but he's gone. Then he came back to the, the city, and this is the verse of scripture that um, caught my attention this week. It says, Then the men, men of the city said to Elisha, Please notice the situation of this city. It's pleasant. It seems like everything's going well. Verse 19. Sorry, did I not tell you where we are? Right. <laughs> it was highlighted in my Bible. I apologize. So, 2 Kings... Chapter 2, verse 19. So the men of the city said to Elisha, Everything looks nice on the outside here. But there's a situation. There's a slight problem. As my Lord sees, but the water is bad and the ground is barren. This condition was a little bit under the surface. It affected everyone there. It didn't produce anything. Everything looked fine. I don't know if you live in a country where things look fine, but there's a little bit of a problem. <laughs> we might fit in that category. And so now Elisha said this. He said, bring me a new bowl. Hmm. A new bowl. God's looking for some vessels to use. He would like some new ones. How many is being made new in this day and age? And put salt in it. And so they brought it to him. And then he went out to the source of the water. You know, we could spend a lot of our time trying to deal with Results or the, the circumstances that happen in our life. But sometimes you have to go right to the source of the problem. You'll spend your whole life backtracking and the source is still not changed. So Elijah went to the source of the water and he cast the salt there and he said, Thus says the Lord, I have healed this water. From it there shall no more death or barrenness. God wants to fix the source. So the word says here, the water remains healed to this day, according to the word of Elisha, which he spoke. Hmm. We are living in a day that there is some barrenness, there is some death that's happening in the world around us. And God's looking for a vessel that he can put something in, and take it to the source of the problem. In our own lives, in our community, in other people's lives. I mean, understand, 
their water source. It's not like they had Aquafina back then. They didn't have Coca-Cola bottling water and selling it to them for a dollar. They had to literally go find it. God wants to use us in this day and age. So that was the thing that got this all started. How many has ever read your Bible and one thing leads to another? Yeah. <laughs> Matthew chapter 5, and we're just going to kind of go through this chapter here. Matthew chapter 5, and it says, And seeing the multitudes, he went up on a mountain, and, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth, and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit. How many has ever read that and goes, that don't make no sense? <laughs> Why is all the people having problems, the ones that are blessed? That doesn't make sense. Right. Right. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> Why? Oh, God's just trying to say, oh, everything's fine. Really, you're blessed. And, I'm, and everyone's like, I'm not buying it. I got problems. How many's read that and, and thought that? Just don't, don't go ahead and be honest, because I thought that even in my green Bible, I thought, I don't know what that's talking about. But we talked last week about understanding the scriptures. Okay, it, the the kingdom of God is a little bit of a mystery. Okay, and so we need one. It says you can't even see it unless you're saved, and then. There's some people that are saved that may see it and go, but I don't know what it's about, right? Okay. So there, there needs to be some understanding that comes with this. So Jesus is teaching them. Now, let's be honest. Matthew was taking notes. He didn't re-preach the whole message. All we have are the main points, right? right? <laughs> Jesus is like, yeah, I got a few points about who's blessed. And Matthew's like, all right, I'm going to write this down. We didn't get all the stuff in the middle. Okay, uh -oh. so blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's nice. One sweet day they'll be in heaven. How do you interpret what God was saying? See, the kingdom of God is now. It's available right now. So what God's saying is, man, if you want to be blessed, need me. If you need me, I'll show up. The ones that are blessed are the ones that recognize, whew, I'm a wreck. I'm a mess. I need God. And those are the ones that receive the blessing. The one that says, oh, no, I'm doing fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. One day in heaven, I'll have what I need. You know what? They're not blessed. They don't have the kingdom now. They have nothing now. They just have what they can do in the flesh now. Blessed are those who mourn. Are you kidding me? Is he just making this stuff up? How do you... Re get, you're going to have to read your Bible for real. Blessed are those who mourn. Why? For they shall be comforted. You know what happens when you're down? You find out someone loves you. You didn't know that before. Blessed are those who experience life and find out that life continues, it goes on, and God has not abandoned us, He's not forsaken us. We get to experience God probably more in the bad days than in the good days. How many has a really good ability to remember all the great things that have happened? Or are they seemingly overwhelmed by the bad things that have happened. Right? We can remember all the things that went wrong. It's sometimes hard to remember the things that went right. I've got a few stories of some things. Engine blowing up. Right? I can remember that story. But last week when God did something, what happened? What was that again? Right? It's, it's easy to remember the bad. But God did something through that. And that's what we have to Remember, that's what we have to know. And that's what Jesus is talking about. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. That's kind of opposite to what everyone's kind of rolling with. They've been fighting forever. 
Uh, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Remember, it's righteousness. Those who hunger and thirst to be in right standing with God, what? They will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for what? They shall obtain mercy. Do unto others, guess what God's doing to you. Blessed are the pure in heart, for what? They will what? See God. Purify me, Lord. Clean me up. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God. This is what happens. This is what happens when you finally see the kingdom. Nobody likes it. The devil is afraid. The devil goes, "Oh, he's going to start messing with what I got going." But God said, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. you got to remember that in the middle of the devil getting after you because he's afraid of you. Blessed are you when, when they revel and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you, and false, uh, against you falsely for my sake. Blessed are you when the whole stuff hits all the spinny-whirly thing. Yeah. <laughs> Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. There is a, there is a reward for standing up for the kingdom of God. And I think we have to sometimes remind ourselves about eternity. I know it starts today, but it does last for a long period of time. And so we need to sometimes put that in perspective. Now, it's important to read all the Bible, not in one day, but when you're reading something, you don't want to just pick the thing you like the most. You've got to understand why you like it the most, okay? Verse 13, this is what we were getting to, but I thought the, the stuff before that was really good, right? Jesus preached it. I figured it probably would be okay. So, verse 13, it says this, You are the salt of of the earth. Hmm. In, El in Elisha's moment, he got a new vessel and he used some salt, right? Well, what is God doing right now? He is what? Us. We're his salt. We're the, the instrument in which he wants to take and put at the source of the problem and, and change should happen. So you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned again? It's then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. Wow. How many has ever, you know, said the lights are on but no one's home? <laughs> Sometimes we come home and you're like, huh, we did leave a few lights on when we left. <laughs> you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. So let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify you, uh, glorify your Father in heaven. So we are the salt. So we're to be salty. We need to stay salty. And God wants to put us right at the source of some problems. Okay. Some people are going to have some situations in their life that they can't fix on their own. They may be deep underground. There may be some issues and things in their life that they can't fix on their own. And God needs someone who ha is salt, right, that can go and come to that situation and bring healing to it. Yeah. We saw a demonstration of that today. I don't know about you, but the, the salt was flying. <laughs> All right. Amen. Okay? And, and many of you were praying for those with some yeah. moments of need. Right? right? So you are experiencing what we're talking about today. So, you know, 
it's God's deal. So if he wants to let the cat out of the bag before the message, I guess that's up to him, you know? <sighs> I mean, we got it all done now. Now we're just learning about what we did. So, you know, it's fine, you know? It definitely wasn't my fault that it all happened, you know? It wasn't my great preaching that made it happen. It is God who does the things. So, we are to be that salt. And, and I'm glad that we were able to see a demonstration that uh, it is us working on, yeah. in concert with God, yeah. that causes these things to take place and change. Sometimes we, we pray like, God, make me. I don't know about you, but God ain't going to make you do nothing. That's right. I know. He will judge what you've done by the fruit in your life, but he's never made anybody do anything. He didn't make me sin. He didn't make me be good. He gave me a choice. He gave me a free will. And the reality is, is he, he's looking for someone who will want to. Come on. I want to. That's, that's what separates us from everything else God made. Yes. We've had some of these stories about creation in our house and questions about that and well why did God make us this way and why did well because all the animals don't really have a choice of what they get to do they just they're they do what they do that's what their programming was but God added a little extra when he made us he's like I'm gonna let them say no I'm gonna let them say I don't want to do what you said and then the ones that do what I've asked them to do, I'll know they really love me. Yeah. I want to be found in that category of, huh, he really loves God. Yeah. Not because he has to, but because he wants to. And that's the difference. We don't have to, but we want to. Okay. Let's keep diving down here in chapter 5, uh, verse uh, 17. So after he talks about who's blessed and what we're to be, the salt, then he says this, Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I didn't come to destroy, but to fulfill them. For assuredly, I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, not one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law until it is fulfilled. Now verse 19, whoever, 17 and 18, we all knew that. I'm just reading for context, okay? I'm not, I'm not a chicken preacher, you know, where you just pick your favorite verse and... <laughs> anyway. Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commands and teaches men to do this. Yeah, this isn't very fun, right? Yeah, right. Actually, I think it's great. Whoever breaks one of the least of the commands and teaches others to do the same shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does, and, who does the commandments of God and teaches them to do them shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. God has, he's looking for someone who wants to love him Amen. and chooses to love him. Amen. Blessed is who? Whew. Blessed is those who see the kingdom of God and begin to live in the kingdom of God and receive the benefits of the kingdom of God and then teach others how to live in the kingdom of God. Yeah. It starts by just being obedient. It starts by being obedient to the commandments of God. Sometimes just in simple things and then in bigger things. Right. As we learn more, we find out how we can be more obedient to God. And what does that do? It just puts us in one of these different blessed categories. And Jesus is saying this is what the benefits are for that. In Luke chapter 5, we're going to keep moving along because time waits for no man. Luke chapter 5 in verse 12. And it happened when he was in 
a certain city that behold a man who was full of leprosy saw Jesus and fell on his face and implored him saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. He had faith in who God is. We want to say was. Those dang pronouns in the English language. They mean a whole lot. I'm in fourth grade language right now. I'm learning things I never knew. <laughs> I'm relearning things I couldn't wait to forget. <sighs> so, if you're willing, Lord, you can. What can God do? And what would we come and say... I trust you that you can and you will and hey, if you want to, fire her up. Montana's hands are ready. Fire it up. <laughs> so then Jesus put out his hand and touched him saying, I'm willing. Be cleansed. Now we're talking about salt that's put in a fresh bowl and poured out. This, how many has ever had a salt shaker that you can't get no salt out of? It sat around, it doesn't have rice in it, and it is all stuck together, right? Because, you know, you were cooking earlier and the humidity from boiling the water, it, you just can't get anything out of it. We have to be willing. Jesus even had to be willing. I don't know about you. We'll read the verses. Because the Bible does tell the story. So then he put out his hand and touched him, saying, I'm willing, be cleansed. Immediately the leprosy left him. What is the power of God like? It has the ability to not only create, but to repair. But that only happens with a willing vessel, willing to be poured out, that still has some salt in its saltiness, right? And so then he charged him to don't tell anybody. Jesus is the master of winning the world. I just performed a miracle by the power of God. Don't tell anybody. I always think that's funny. But go and show yourself to the priest and make an offering for your cleansing as a testimony to them, just as Moses commanded. He was teaching him to keep the commandments of God. God's done something. How many has ever been or seen someone get what they've been believing God for and then all, all flesh breaks loose? I got exactly what I wanted. I don't need God anymore. This, this, you want to know why? You want to know why miracles don't happen all the time? God's not an idiot. God's purpose in the miraculous is not to fix everybody's problem. His purpose is to save their soul for eternity. So God's not going to utilize the very best that he has if that person is not ready for eternity. If they're not ready to make, if that's not the thing that's going to help them go, oh, I want to be in the kingdom forever. Wow. Wow. Now, occasionally, he's like, maybe it's 50-50. It could go either way. And I've watched it as a child. I've watched people get their miracle and then no longer need God. And, and we live in a society, uh, in, in, in a nation, that is our relationship with God is to get something. And, and then when we get it, we don't know any longer need God because we, what we needed was our God. And God was just a way to get what we needed. And so we don't see the power of God 99% of the time. Because we're not after God, we're after what God can do for us. Wow. Say that. Wow. Say that. 
Now, Jesus came and he demonstrated some things, and he's looking for a kingdom of priests who will also demonstrate some things. But we have to realize, I'm not running around throwing salt on everything. God's not chucking me out down the road. He's not throwing me everywhere. He's going to go to the source of someone who believes in God. It, who already is just, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to get there. I'm, I don't know how to get there, but I want to get there. I just, yeah. I need, yeah. help me. Yeah. That's yeah. Yes. You probably are not going to experience any miraculous things with people who are like, you know what, I don't need God. Because yeah. they're not in the blessed list. Wow. Blessed are the poor in spirit, not the, I have everything I need and my 401k is doing great and I've got, you know, everything I've ever needed and it's, they don't need God. They don't even want God because God would require me to be obedient to his instructions and I'm not really interested in that. I've got everything I need. Jesus came and he what? He cleansed this leper. However, verse 15 the report went around concerning him all the more, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. He told them, don't tell anybody, and everybody found out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what did he do? He withdrew himself often and went into the wilderness and prayed. Why in the world does he have to go pray? I mean, if he's God, why does he got to go talk to God? <sighs> what do you want to do, God? That's the question. I think he went and asked. Right. What do you want to do, God? There's a whole... I got lots of options. <laughs> what you, plan A, B, B74. What do you want to do with all of these people? Because I, I can't do this on my own. Right. I really need to know what you want to do. What's the source? What, what do I really need to touch? What do I really need to deal with? I can just heal all these people and they don't have a relationship with me. They don't know who I am. They just came and got what they wanted. What do you, what do you want to do, God? Because what do you want to do is you want to save their soul. You don't want to fix their flesh. That's right. God is about our soul. That's our eternity. That's what he created. Our flesh is not forever. So God is not looking at our, our moment only. He's really looking at our eternity. He's really looking at our future, our forever. And the, the opportunities that present themselves right now, he wants to take those and say, how can I, how can I use those moments to prepare you for your eternity? So Jesus, he went himself even, and he prayed. He found out what God's will was so that he could do God's will. Amen. Amen. Hmm. I don't know. We could end there. I have a few more things. What do you want to do, God? <laughs> you know, it doesn't hurt to ask. That's right. I don't want to do something that was just a good idea. In James chapter 1 and verse 12, we're going to come back to another one of these. This is... <clears throat> This isn't red print, okay? This is someone who began to understand something speaking. And so James chapter 12 and verse, or James chapter 1 and verse 12, it says, Blessed is the man who endures temptation. Here's another one of those. What is he talking about? That does not seem like a blessing. Saving 15% on my car insurance seems like a blessing. Enduring temptation sounds like a pain in the rear. Enduring temptation sounds like trials and tribulation. This doesn't sound like a blessing. Yeah. And you'll have all the liberty you want. 
Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. See, there's a, there's a big thought that, oh my goodness, God made, God's doing this to teach me a lesson. No, we make enough messes of our life to teach our, God just saying, let's make the best of it. That's true. Yeah. God did not make my children go outside and fall down or get in the mud or break something. He did not make them do any of that. They did that all on their own. And I, just as a loving father, took that opportunity to say, well, let's learn from that. Yeah. I didn't plan it, but they're abundant. I don't need to add to those moments. We got enough of them. <laughs> I could use every other one and still be more than they want, right? <sighs> Let no one say when he's tempted, I'm tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Oh, come on. Wow. Wow. We want to blame God for a whole lot of stuff he had nothing to do with. And then we want to blame the devil and say it's his fault. He has less power than God. Just kind of put that into perspective. Then when they desire... Uh, has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it's fulfill, fulfilled, grows and brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good and perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own word he brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. Do you know what you're going to have in this life? Temptation. Yeah. Temptation to not keep the commandments of God. Temptation to just do a whole bunch of stuff that we all know we shouldn't do. We're going to have temptation to just say, you know what, God, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. But when you endure that temptation, let's be honest. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. It's not easy but there is a reward for pressing through of that. Not only now, because the kingdom is now, but also for eternity. Now, I didn't know what God was going to do before I preached, but these were the verses that I had in here. <clears throat> it's really literally printed in red and black. <clears throat> James chapter 5, verse 13, it says, Is anyone among you suffering... Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing. We had some testimonies that we heard about today. Uh, we had some people who were suffering, and we prayed. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with the oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. And who does the raising up? The Lord will raise them up, and he has, and if he's committed sins, he'll be forgiven. Wow. I mean, talk about full service. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Do you understand, our past really messes up our future. And God says, you know what? I'll fix that too. Because I'm not just here to make your flesh feel better. I'm really here to save your soul. Yes. And not only does he want to just repair the damage that sin has produced in our life, but he wants to stop the repercussions of what our past has done. How many here has passed? And it keeps affecting our future. God wants to put a stop to that. That's what that forgiveness of sin gets into. Where were we? 15? I think I'm reading. Yeah, I think we covered all of that. 
confess your trespass, verse 16, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effect of fervent prayer of a righteous man avails month, much. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. Real prayer will produce something. Really calling out to God and saying, I know you have the ability to heal me, God. If you want to, I'm, go for it. God can work with those who really believe he can do something. But I, I wonder how much can he work with those who don't think God can do anything. He didn't heal everybody. I mean, there were moments that he healed all the sick among them. But there were other times he went and said, God, what do you want to do? What do you want to do in this day and age, God? What source do you want healed so that everyone is affected? Yes. Everyone sees who God is. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13, it says, No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. Okay. Okay. God is faithful. And he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. Okay. But I mean, just think about the story of Job for a minute. That one didn't make a whole lot of sense. But the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape, that you may be able to endure it, breaking addiction. What full circle, what do we have in our land today? People have this. God made a, an instruction about it. You may have heard it before. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Yeah. But this world is addicted to things other than God. Yeah. And those things bring them joy and peace and happiness and pleasure. But unfortunately, they also take many things. Yeah. They destroy. It, it, it's a, a thing that Eventually, death is the final result. Yeah. And God said, choose life, not death. Yeah. And how do we do that? Okay, God, I choose life. I mean, that's, it's that simple, but that's not what he meant. He, he meant, you're going to have to realize I'm going to make a way to escape those addictions that really, truly are bringing you to death right. so that you can choose life and guess what? If you're in the middle of that, you're blessed. If you're in the middle of that process, you're blessed. Because right now the kingdom of God can be revealed. You can receive the very thing that you need. God gets to work in your life. You get to see God do something that you couldn't do on your own. So what's our focus? To be earth changers. Amen. We want to take this salt, us, who, we, who God's made us to be, and we want to go to the source and change the earth. Yes. Amen. Yes. Well, Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you that it is alive today. It's it's reaching out from these pages and it's wanting to help us become who you've called us to be. Amen. Father, my prayer for all of those online and, and listening to this message that if they feel like they need another portion of salt or maybe their salt stuck in the jar and you can't get it out, let's, let's get in a new vessel today. Let's, let's get ourselves in position that we might be willingly poured out and I thank you that in that willingness, man, we're going to see the earth changed. Wow. We're going to see the earth changed. Father, I thank you that it is your will yeah. that you would save those. And, and God, we're, we're not here to try to make miracles happen, to perform miracles, to be impressive. We want to 
We want to submit to your will. What do you want to do, God? And what soul needs to be saved? What soul are you drawing unto you? And God, how can we help tip that balance of their understanding and their belief that they will forever be changed? So God, what do you want to do in us today, in, in those, in, in the Watts family, and in, in Matthew, and in the Evanses, and in Minister Ryan today? What do you want to do in and through their life, and, and, and position them so that when they come to the source of someone's problem, they have something to, to put on the ground, to, to, to affect what's around them? So I thank you, Heavenly Father, that it is your will <laughs> that none should perish. That's what you desire, that everyone would choose life. Now, Heavenly Father, we know not everyone's going to choose life. You said narrow is the way and few will find it. But God, help us find those few. Help us show the narrow way to those. That narrow way is, guess what? You get to be obedient. Guess what? You get to keep the commandments of God. Guess what? You get to experience the kingdom of God now. And then you might have to endure some tough stuff, but I'll bring you through that. There's going to be a, a crown waiting for that which you've endured. Well... Along the way, there's going to be others that we can bring salvation to that the Lord can raise up and, and bring along as well. So, Heavenly Father, my prayer for all of those online, all of us in the house today, that we would receive this commission to be salt and light. And I thank you that we would see that we are already practicing doing that. What salt look like? It may look like a hug. It, it, it may look like laying hands on someone who isn't well. It, it, it may look like being obedient to following the instructions of God when it doesn't seem popular. And I thank you that's going to change some earth. It's going to bring healing to those places that are barren. We give you praise, Heavenly Father. We give you thanks for that today. Amen. Amen. Amen.